Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Deborah Rosinski. I'm executive director of Bainbridge Arts and Crafts, and it's my great pleasure to be here talking with Karen Schminke. Karen, you have really quite an impressive career um, as a teacher and as an artist, and um, your work is all over the world, and, and uh, learning about the way you've gone about your work and um, being kind of on the the cusp of the new digital <laughs> graphics age in the 90s. Um, you were an early artist who adopted digital processes in your work. Um, and I'd love to learn more about what drives you and how, how you found that world and came to incorporate it. And, um, and I'll ask you questions as we go. Thank you, yeah. Be happy to talk about that. Um, the, the digital part, I was uh, in grad school finishing my MFA and I had always been interested in computers. In those days, my friends taking computer classes were carrying around these uh, cards, the, you know, the programming cards. And the physicality of that, I guess, with the dot, dot the holes in it was fascinating to me. But not, and I would have even taken a class, but I didn't have one of the prerequisites, so I never did. But when I was in grad school, there was a class that showed up called um, Computing for the Fine Arts. And uh, David Seeley at the University of Iowa taught this class that was for people in, in dance and theater and fine arts. And he was teaching basic programming. And, and this was basically pre-personal computer days. And so I, I took this class and I was really fascinated by it. And it just sort of, and I, about that time I got my MFA and went off to teach art and, uh, went to the, the um, computer, computing department at the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire where I was teaching and said, I, what do you, I need some help learning about computer graphics. And they said, we don't know anything about computer graphics, but we would like you to learn about it. So they sent me to all the conferences I wanted to go to. You know, anytime I wanted to go, they would send me. And uh, it led me further into it and, and it took you know quite a few years for the uh, industry really to get to a point where there were computers that could do the types of things that I, I was imagining. And uh, so that was where my interest took off and um, I you know got Macintosh as soon as the colored version came out. And I had before that an, an older, uh, in the eighties I had a, an Amiga computer, but it, I really, I, the first work I ever showed in a museum was probably in in a show, I should say, it was in 87. And it was a, a mixed media piece that I made with this Amiga computer and a printer I had. And it was all kind of cobbled together. But so ever since then, I've, I've been really interested in it. But it, it didn't really take off uh, as something that was really doable till the large format printers became available. And that was basically what me and a group of other artists explored in the 90s. And that's uh, what I think you see reflected in, in the writings and, and uh, resume and magazine articles and stuff was we were really uh, approaching companies and asking them to uh, think about letting artists use their large format printers to create art. Because before that, it was all uh, business graphics, basically. And the, the inks were really fugitive. And so there's a lot of issues with it, but we were really intrigued by it. And we kept finding new ways of, of using them that they'd never thought of. And so it was it was a very exciting time, but it was very much, a, a, we did a lot of trade shows and we would trade show to trade show and every every trade show we had to have new new techniques worked out. So it was sort of a, a grad school in, in digital art that went on for like, I don't know, 10 years. And then we sort of, um, quit doing the trade show circuit and wrote, wrote a book about what we'd learned. And, and, uh, and so it, it's, I've always, uh, always been interested in combining traditional tools with the digital because I feel the digital, especially in the early days, uh, had a lot of um, weaknesses. Now it's a little more uh, robust than it was then. But uh, also I just really love traditional tools and paints and media. And I, I didn't want to leave those completely behind. I felt that the strength of both of those approaches was really important. You have the power of the digital to 
um, envision things rapidly um, and robustly. You have the beauty of the traditional tools and they really supported it, support each other. And so uh, every piece of work I've probably ever created seems to have some element of, of both uh, in it. And it, and it kind of uh, starts from the very beginning. Sometimes I digitally photograph, sometimes I draw, and then sometimes I do both and bring them together, but they, they go back and forth between the two sides all the way through production. Uh, and, and you'll see that. You can see that really easily in the work in the show, like the pieces behind you. Um, and there's, you can see the, I'm now using a laser, not so much a printer, but a laser that I can laser cut and etch. And you can see the, the cut paper in there and everything else is painted. So it, it, it allows me the strength of having this really um, complex structured form that uh, is very precisely designed and not necessarily realistic, but precisely designed by me and then uh, the beauty of the paints with it. Um, I, can, I can show this little, uh, this, this, I had this in my studio, this sort of started off, the pieces that are behind you started. I had this piece of paper that I cut and it was sort of a dead end, I don't remember what it was from and I'd thrown it on top of a piece of um, plywood. And I just really liked the texture that I got. And um, at the same time, for some reason, I, I put those pieces in that series that are behind you. I became interested in, in, in doing some sort of radial imagery. I usually kind of avoid the circular forms, but um, but I, I found that I, I was really interested in that. And I and I in you know I find in my work I, I do something and then I kind of realize why. And I, I think that uh, this work is all about kind of our muted life we've been living the last three years. Uh, everything's sort of on hold, everything's in pause, and it's not unlike winter in the garden. And I'm a gardener from, from forever. And, um, and so I love looking at things that are kind of on hold in the garden that are paused for the winter months. Or, or, uh, and so I realized that what I was doing is sort of reflecting kind of our, our life being quieted down. And I'd made these really intricate forms like, back up and show you this. This is the, the form that's in the piece, the small piece right behind you. And I had this one uh, laying around the studio as well. And it's again, a cut paper, so as you can see. It. But uh, it, it was based on a plant that was just beginning to grow. And, uh, and so I found myself just really liking that and, and taking those forms and p putting them down on, a, on on plywood, but then painting, pa basically painting them down and into this muted, muted place. Uh, and then I, you know, added these kind of reservoirs of color at the bottom that are, they're very watery looking and they look very fluid. And to me, they sort of represent like a potential source of energy and growth as, as the is our times change and life sort of takes off again. So they're sort of my, my muted, you know, muted view of, of the world recently. And yeah, so that's kind of the inspiration for those series that uh, is in the show with the radio forms in them. Well, great, yeah. So um, like this piece behind me, so this is paper on the top that you've then painted over and, and built up more textures with paint on. And then this is plexiglass, is that right? Or uh, the bottom panels are actual uh, aluminum panels, and mm -hmm. then I'm using a acrylic medium to pour a, a color onto top of them, and and I'm layering it up. And one of the layer, <laughs> between a couple of the layers, goes the rice paper that's been cut uh, on, on my laser, and then it gets buried up in the layers. Uh, so it's really sort of, uh, it is, uh, you know, a, a lot of layers with the, with the paper floating in there. And you can get a sense of it not being against the metal. It, it, it has a, almost a little shadow in there, which gives it an interesting effect, I think. Yeah, it's, you really, you create such re unique surfaces and um, all that layering adds this kind of mystery to how it comes together. Yeah. I think the physicality in art is so important to me to have some, uh, so have the, something that you just want to, you know, the, the visual, not necessarily touch, but the visual physicality that there's something that's not just flat to me. And so the, you know, starting out working 
with digital printing, it was just so flat. And that's one of the reasons that I didn't ever really do any straight digital printing. I was always printing on, like maybe printing and then painting and then printing again. So there would be like layering up. So there was always a physicality to what I'm doing. And I think this, this work is very, very physical. And I, that's my favorite part about this work is the physicality of, and the contrast of the two panels uh, in, in every case that they have two kinds of uh, complementary physicality but different, very different. Now I was looking into your background and um, it was two other people that you did a lot of the digital research with, right? And, and you mentioned a place called Digital Atelier. Is that tied with um, uh, Seward Johnson and the Johnson Atelier or is that? No, no, they, uh, no. No, they are different from us. Uh, they're more, that was more of a 3D um, <laughs> Thing that they were working on, but we uh, we we had the name first, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, we the name came from a, a our artist in residency we did at the Smithsonian uh, American Museum of Art in like the mid '90s, and uh, with two other artists, uh, Judith Moncrief and Helen Golden, and the two artists that you referred to are Dorothy Krauss and Bonnie Mahoda. And the five of us did this uh, uh, re residency at the Smithsonian and we, for three weeks, and we brought in these large format digital printers and we brought in a whole um, lab of computers. And so people could come in and, and take a photograph or take an image and then they could manipulate it and print it. Nobody had ever seen that in, in those days. And uh, in, in the meantime, we were printing large pieces around them on, on the, uh, but anyway, that was the name Digital Atelier. And then after that, we go over uh, Dot and Bonnie and I uh, worked together for many, many years under that name, doing the, the trade shows and things that I uh, mentioned. And uh, we, uh, and then we wrote the book. And then after that, was, that was sort of, our, like I say, our grad, our 10 years of grad school. And then we kind of went our own ways as graduates of that, but carrying all of it with us. But uh, yeah, so that's uh, the, the, Three of us, uh, uh, Dorothy at the time was living in Boston, now she's in Florida, but and Bonnie was in uh, is in Boulder. So uh, it, it was interesting that the um, World Wide Web was just becoming a thing, and and we joined AOL and we talked like every day, and it was it was a uh, it was very uh, interesting time to be doing everything digital and then connecting digitally too, which was new for all of us at that time. Uh, it was a crazy crazy 10 years. And we, we did a lot of interesting projects together. We went to uh, Harvey Littleton's studio in, um, in uh, West, uh, where is he? West Virginia? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm and, a uh, artist, so I, I know about yes, that. Yes, yeah. So you're anyway, doing did, digital decals for them? You, you're showing them how to do- um, Well, we did. They invited us to come and print, make prints, but bring uh, a digital printer, a, a large format printer, because they were interested in how they might integrate it into their practice. So we, yeah. we brought it in and we did uh, prints that use traditional printmaking and digital uh, a digital print. Nobody had done it at that point. Now it's everywhere in Seattle and everywhere. But uh, it, it was really fun. We were there for, I think, two weeks as well and uh, made a series of prints uh, with his printmaker Judith work and it was a very uh, very fun and they they kept on using it and I think they said just about everybody who came after we were there also did uh, a part of the print had a digital element to it so it was fun we did a lot of that kind of educational thing we we really saw ourselves as getting the industry interested in what they needed to do to make this work for artists and and then getting artists interested in how they you know to try to pull those two worlds together now they're they're pretty overlapped and nobody thinks about it, but in, but in those days, it was, it was, it was very interesting and exciting and uh, quite the, <laughs> quite the experience. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. The worlds you've kind of been a part of through these connections and then using these um, kind of precision processes to create, well, very nature inspired imagery maybe that comes from your avidness as a gardener. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I also grew up on a farm. So I have, you know, it's like my whole life has been pretty much <laughs> tied into the seasons. There's a, I've always been very aware uh, of nature and, and found 
um, nature's always been my escape and my solace. And so uh, I'm always interested. All my work uh, has had natural elements in it, more realistic, less realistic. Oh, I've always, that's what I've always drawn or painted even since I was a child. And um, I, uh, I, I hope, I mean, you know, I'm always work, working to try to not only share those kinds of imagery with people, but also somehow that experience. And I find myself to get at that heart of the experience. My work over the years is growing more and more abstract. And I think I want, I think that that's more uh, successful in getting at the heart of the matter than showing um, a, a scene or a plant or whatever it might be. And so uh, people kind of meditate and bring their own thoughts into it. And they're just a little bit more cerebral, I think, than, than the older work used to be. Um, um, really interested in ideas, like I mentioned, this work of rejuvenation and, and rebirth and uh, those kinds of concepts. Maybe it says I'm getting older, <laughs> something that, that attracts me, I'm not sure. Or, or certainly, I, I know it was an interest for a while, but the pandemic has really brought that home to that interest uh, in recovery. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think we'll all be still living that way for a while. It just goes on and on, doesn't it? <laughs> but but yeah, you've you've been kind of all over the country, and um, I saw Cal State Northridge, and you were teaching there for a number of years, and and so you came up to Seattle after deciding to retire. Is that right from teaching? No, uh, well. <laughs> Uh, not necessarily intentionally, but my husband got a job up here, and it was his first teaching job, and I'd been teaching for quite a while, and, uh, and he uh, just got his degree at UCLA when I was teaching at, at Cal State Northridge, uh, in business, and um, he got a job at, at the UW Bothell campus here, and uh, we, we just, we probably should have, we didn't try to figure out that, you know, sometimes they can get a spousal assignment in the university somewhere, and we you know, didn't do that. And so I moved up here without a teaching job, taught part-time at uh, the uh, Shoreline Community College for several years. And that, that was really nice. But uh, at the same time that we moved here was the time that I met these other artists that were working digitally and went to a workshop that Dorothy had put together at, she taught at uh, Mass College of Art and Design in Boston. And she put together a, a national workshop for uh, people to come and experiment, you know, experiment with this idea of mixing traditional media. And it was in the, the printmaking workshop there. And the interesting thing to me was it was a really cheap tuition. I don't know, it was hundred dollars or something. And the flight and the, the tuition we'd stayed in the dorms was equal to the expense of having a couple of uh, medium sized digital prints done in the day before I had these, these large format printers we used um, this iris prints and there was only a few uh, people doing them uh, in the country and they were like 19 cents a square inch and so you know it, they were very very expensive so she in her prospectus for the workshop dot said that we would all go away with you know three or four or five prints big prints and with mixed media and I thought well that's you know that's a, I'll come out ahead financially so so I went and, and uh, it was really a, a great workshop and we did a lot of interesting experiments uh, for a couple of days. And then uh, the five of us that I mentioned uh, that went to the Smithsonian after a couple of years of other things that we did um, met there. And so that was sort of the, kicked it off, but it was the same summer that we moved to Seattle. Mm. So, and got on the, and I got on the internet and I'd lived here about a year or two before I realized, you know, I haven't met another artist. I'm on the internet all day long with these <laughs> artists around the country, but I don't know anybody in Seattle. And so I started to do things to, to get more connected locally, but, but anyway, yeah. So that's kind of how it all began, but, it, but that's why when I moved here, uh, I just, I said, I'll give myself a year or two to just follow through on this and make art. And it seemed like every year, things had gotten bigger and I couldn't turn away and then it got bigger and I couldn't turn away. And, you know, it just, it kept growing and both career wise and also just uh, what I was doing with the group, you know, in terms of the digital, I guess we could call it research. Uh, it, there was just always another big project coming. So uh, yes, I kind of retired, but it wasn't really the plan. <laughs> but a, a happy surprise out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my husband's now retired and I'm still working. So. <laughs> 
but, it, but it's doing art 100% now, and not so much of the crazy traveling. I mean, I was traveling a lot in those early years with the group. Yeah. We had to be home making art these days. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it's been a really amazing kind of odyssey and exchange of information and techniques and ideas and all of that. Yeah, it, it has been, yes. Uh, it's, it was a, we always called it the cutting edge where you bleed a lot because it, it was true. I mean, there was a lot of frustration, but also a lot of excitement, you know, as you can imagine. Or anything you would hope that they would feel in experiencing your work. Or hope they would come away with. Well, you know, I, I, I kind of already said it. I'm always uh, drawn to nature for relaxation and solace, and and I'm trying to uh, express that in art. But more than that, I'm trying to share those feelings with people that come, and if if they can get some of that joy or relaxation or contemplation, um, that that would be what I would hope would be the result of their viewing the work. Uh, I think all the work approaches this, this uh, goal in, in slightly different ways, some more abstractly, some, some are a little bit more documentary. There's a series uh, in the show called uh, Garden Journals, which are small, they're basically drawings, but this is an example of the, the digital uh, joining in my work is that these were drawings. I did it sitting outside in my yard uh, of plants that I was enjoying watch, watching grow in the early summer. And, but I, and I love to draw and I've always loved to draw, but you have a drawing and it doesn't have the, the presence that something like a painting would have. And so I suppose traditionally somebody would have taken that drawing and uh, transferred it to canvas and, and then painted it. But what I do in my practice is I took the drawings and scanned them to be digital and then um, you know, brought them in and etched them uh, on the computer, uh, I'm sorry, on the laser onto pre-painted boards. And, and I painted them a different layer so you etch through to different layers. So there's a lot of serendipity in that process, more than probably a painting actually, <laughs> because I had kind of less control. So it, it was uh, interesting because I would a lot of times have to put the, if I'd finish the etch and I'd go, no, that's not good. I'd have to put it in and re-etch just a part of it and line it up. And it was very technically uh, challenging, but the, but when the, when the viewer looks at it, I hope that they see instead a real uh, tactile, uh, a very tactile uh, presentation of the drawings that is akin to the tactile presentation of the original sources that I was looking at, which are very, you know, very tactile themselves uh, as well. So I, I'm, I hope that even though there's quite a bit of abstraction in all the work that there will also, everyone will also see pieces that will uh, reach them on some level, either realistically or at, you know, the more, um, more abstract and, and fanciful uh, ways. Uh, I, there's one piece in the show called Aspirations of the Whole. And uh, I, the, the, um, if they're also made kind of the same way, but it's a small series of drawings that are just one, big, one small piece, but the drawings are very fanciful. They're not really based on um, things you would see in the garden, but more ideas about things you would see in the garden. And then, then they look almost like microscopic look, look at seeds or something like that. And so they're, they're, they're more fanciful and fun, um, but yet sort of that same, same idea about the potential for growth and change is there. So, you yeah. have a number of uh, pieces that are made up of multiples, um, kind of like gridded multiples compositions. And I'm curious what what led you to working in that format? Well, I, uh, I a lot of my work, like even the work behind you, always seem to have more than one panel that tell a slight different part of the story. And so it was, it was a kind of a short step from there to breaking them into separate pieces uh, to, it, so that you're right, there's several pieces in the show that are uh, a series that become one piece. And uh, I, I think it's sort of like a, the, the element of time in the work, you know, so you could view them as the same form in different times. Uh, there's a lot of ways to interpret it, but uh, it, it's kind of is the element, it, it brings in the elements of time and change, I think a little more clearly than one of any particular thing could, because uh, I'm really 
interested in work that has uh, that tells multiples. It's like seeing a piece of work of mine in a show by itself is so different than seeing my work with more of my work because you look from piece to piece and it tells you more about the full range of what, I, what I'm interested in and what I'm doing. And, and in the same way, in a smaller scale, these multiple piece, single pieces, this single piece of multiple works, uh, I feel d does the same thing and that you can, I can tell more. I can say more with that than I could with just having one. It allows me a, a certain sort of freedom to uh, have changes like the now and then again piece has the 12 uh, pieces at the top that are uh, kind of golden mid early summer, beautiful grasses. And at the bottom, the same grasses, but uh, in kind of their beautiful decline, you know, where they they're have seed heads and they're starting. But, th but there's a progression there. And so the comparison of those two uh, within the same piece tells a lot more than I, I could have with just one or the other. And then uh, there's a light panel in the middle that kind of is the, the gateway between the two different stages and it's sort of a life force symbol for me in there. Uh, that, so, but the, all the parts together just say a lot more than I could with any other. So that's why I do turn to that often as I, I feel like I can, I can build up forms. Of course, there's another piece uh, called inflorescence uh, in the, there and the, the pieces are very abstract but they're put together uh, and inflorescence refers to a flower stem that has uh, little buds on either side like what would that be like a, a lily or a lilac um, and no lilac's probably too complex but anyway a, a, a iris maybe and um, it, but it's one bud that's made up of small forms and so these have like when it's all put together, it kind of it has a slight uh, uh, sh reminiscence of those types of, of ball of forms. So I was able to take something that was very abstract and, and build something by using the multiples that uh, I, I couldn't have. So I always feel I can say more. That I guess is the bottom line. I always feel I can say more. So it's always tempting for me to do that. Or I have multiple panels. Those <laughs> two things. Yeah, I'm always doing it. So it's <laughs> oh, great answer. I, I'm really looking forward to seeing the show come together. And I know you'll be showing with um, Karen Cornell, um, who is a painter, and Bill Roeder, uh, basket weaver. And um, we've added one more artist, Gail Tremblay, has some uh, basket forms made from uh, old films of indigenous peoples. Um, she's an indigenous artist who taught for many years at Evergreen State College. And, uh, we're excited to have her included now too. Um, so it, it should be a, a nice mix of pieces that have kind of related themes, I think, all through. So yeah, I've, I've seen Karen's work online. And, uh, and I, I, it's interesting to see uh, she has a lot of radial imagery too. And uh, the same sort of na nature, but uh, in a kind of a, well, like I do, I guess, very, um, what do I want to say? Not spontaneous, but very cerebral kind of approach to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking to me today and uh, sharing your thoughts with our, our audience here. And um, we're excited to show your work very soon. Well, uh, thank you so much for today and also for the exhibit. Uh, really uh, always nice to have a space to see the art on the walls. <laughs> My studio isn't big enough. So. <laughs> Please join us in person to see four artists, Traditions and Process, featuring Karen Cornell, Bill Roeder, Karen Schminke, and Gail Tremblay on view from September 2nd through October 2nd.